Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Make It Make, where I always try to encourage you guys, if you can't get it to make, then make it make. And today we are gonna be learning how to can meat. So I have my cuts of meat here. This is a roast and I also have some London broils. I'm going to keep the London broil um, all in their own containers and the roast in its own container too. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off as much of the fat as possible. You don't have to do this. Some people like to keep their fat in there um, and I'm just going to start cubing it. So like I was saying, I'm going to start by taking off as much fat as possible. And again, you don't have to do this, but the reason why I do it is because even after taking off all this fat, there's still plenty of it after you process it. And now I'm just going to cut down this roast and I typically like to cut it down into cubes because I know ahead of time the type of recipes that I will be using with this canned meat and normally it's some sort of stew or roast, typical roast in the crock pot or even sandwiches. So cutting it down to size um, works best for me. So we're just gonna continue to cube it, put that to the side here. So, you know, I've, when I tell people that I can my meat, um, I get a lot of strange faces. They're just like, what, you can your meat? I've never heard of that. I, I never knew that you could even do that. And you know, I was, um, I was taken back by the idea of it too when I, when I first heard of it, but it really is the best way to tenderize your meat, especially if you have a London broil that that I have right here, man, when you can this, it comes out. It just, it falls apart in your hands. And venison, venison is probably one of my, the most favorite meat that I do can because of all the ways to cook venison, um, it's the best tasting and tender. I mean, I cannot say more about this method that canning your meat tenderizes it in a way that you've just probably never tasted it before. Um, so it, I get real excited when I get to teach people this. And it was a hard mindset to sort of overcome because I was just like, no, I don't think that we're gonna be doing that. That sounds, that doesn't sound so pleasant to can your meat. But once you ta you've tasted it and you see um, that there's just no other way that you can cook it and it comes out like this, you'll definitely start adding it to your pantry. Now for my roast, I'm just going to start adding some onions here and taking chunks of meat. I'm really going to push it down in there. You can add carrots or layer more onions if you want. And I am going to push it, I push it down really hard because as this cooks, it will start to shrink. The onions will cook and it'll start to shrink down. So I push as hard as I can. The other one here. Piece or two here. There we go. Just get as much as I can. All right. Put that to the side. Now here is a pint jar. And why would I put meat in a pint jar? Because sometimes when I go to make meals, I'm not going to make a whole quart. So it's nice to have the option of having pints as well. After all my meat is canned, I'm just going to take some vinegar on a clean rag and start wiping the rims of the jar. That way I'm creating a good seal between the rim of the jar and the lid. 
and then of course adding our lids and rings fingertip tight and look guys look at this amazing beautiful meat that we have here ready to go in the pressure canner all right, so now our meat is ready to be canned and put in our pressure canner here. If you don't know how to pressure can, I will put an iCard either here or here, or put the link uh, in the description because I have a video on how to pressure can and how to do that for beginners. Also, uh, because this is a quart, we are gonna be processing it for 90 minutes at 11 pounds of pressure. If you were going to be using a pint, it would be 75 minutes at 11 pounds of pressure. All right, um, I'm going to open up the pressure canner now. There's no pressure in this canner at all, uh, but it's still really hot, so there's gonna be a lot of steam coming out. So I'm going to open it away from my face. See all that steam? I don't wanna burn my face, so that's why I always open up the canner away from me. Smells so good. All right. Now oh, look at that. Let me see if I can get that without the glare. Now that is still bubbling. And so what I'll do is I will let these jars sit overnight just like anything else I can and then check the lids the next morning but look at that that's still if you can see that that is still bubbling in there so trust me like 90 minutes is enough for for quartz um, because it's still gonna be cooking so um it is plenty cooked at 90 minutes. I mean, it's, it's still to me that that to me is still cooking. All right. So it's the next day and I've allowed all my jars to completely cool down. And at this point I check to see if I have some good seals. I'm going to take the ring off here and I do that by being able to lift it up by just the lid. And that's a good seal. One of the things I wanted to point out to you was, do you see how thick this layer of fat is? That is still there even with all the fat that I cut out. And that's why I'll do that because I know that this type of meat is a really fatty meat. Um, so the only time I actually add the fat or keep the fat in there is when I'm working with uh, venison because that's a, a more of a lean meat. Um, so the other thing I wanted to point out to you was that if you have a jar and you could see that the top layer is not covered by any liquid or anything like that, it's completely okay. It's fine to eat. Nothing's wrong with it. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I would really appreciate it if you liked this video that you would like and subscribe. Um, but one of the things I wanted to ask you guys is if you have canned your meat, how do you use it? What recipes do you love the most for it? And uh, if you could leave those comments, that would be so great. Take care, guys, and as always, God bless.